welcome to the first ever Rex Chapman Show with my homeboy, Josh Hopkins. Powered by basketballnews.com, by the way. Yeah, Rex, uh, I'm so excited because I think we have the perfect first guest. Your inaugural guest is an old friend of yours, a baller, and I believe you've known him since the, your rookie year in the league. Yeah, known him 33 years now. Uh, his son had a 33rd birthday the other day. That means I, I came into the NBA 33 years ago. You know who we have, Josh? Who is it? Who is it? We have Wardell Stephen Curry the first. Better known as Del Curry. Better known as Daddy because he's the daddy to Seth and to Stefan. And the whole reason that he's in my phone as daddy for the last 33 years is he's the first of my friends to ever have a kid and someone call that person daddy. So <laughs> I am happy to have him as our first guest. Why don't we get to the conversation? Let's do it. Dale, welcome. All right, man. Good. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, looking forward to this. Uh, yeah, when you, you said, hey, I want to have you on. I'm like, dude, I got nothing else to do. Let's do it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, Josh, uh, meet, meet Dell. Dell. Hey, Josh. nice to meet you, sir. I'm really excited to have you on. Um, Please don't call him sir. Please don't call yeah. him sir. <laughs> uh, yeah. I am. I'm, I'm so excited for this. A lot of people don't know your all's history, and you've got I'm sure great stories about one another uh you know in the league uh when Rex first came in I believe you you were on the team and and, and probably showed him the ropes I'm going to back out of this in a lot of ways and let you two go because this is going to be fascinating for me so just to start do you remember the first time you all met do you do you remember that or do you remember your first impressions at all both of you yeah, my, my first impression, I was, a, you know, back in 88 um, expansion draft. I came from uh, Cleveland, so I was the first guy to, to be on the Hornets. And I remember they invited me down for the draft and selected 6'3 guard out of Kentucky, Rex Chapman at the two-guard spot. I went, what the hell? What? Wait, no, I'm the two-guard. What's going on here, man? No, uh, but uh, we, we formed a friendship right away. Uh, and you can tell it's it's still vibrant. Uh, Rex is one of my good buddies, man. We, um, the c competition was there, but the mutual respect was there, um, and he's like family. Yeah, you know it's weird. It's weird to hear. I, I first of all, I never called Dell Dell. I call him Daddy, and the reason for <laughs> that the reason for that is because when I first moved to Charlotte, I pulled up. And we just happened to be in an apartment two doors down from one another. Muggsy stayed yeah. right around the corner, all three of us in the same apartment complex. And when I got there, I knew they had Dell on the team, but I didn't know anything about him. I knew he was scored like 2000 points in college and was, you know, uh, all American of Virginia tech. I knew all of that. Um, but he was a two guard. I also knew that. I pulled up to my very first apartment and Dell and Sonya's wife and uh, Stefan, baby Stefan, are in the parking lot. They knew I was coming in somehow. Dell had his arm in a, in a cast. He had broken his wrist. And uh, that's the first time I met them. They helped me carry all my stuff in. I didn't know how to do laundry. They were doing my laundry. Uh, and I don't know. I don't think I've ever. I don't know if you even remember this, Dell. We had to go somewhere. Uh, early on, like the first week, some kind of appearance. And we all had to wear suits. And I came yep. over to take a ride, you know, get a ride with you. And uh, I walked in and I had my tie in my hand and you looked at me and went, <laughs> you don't know how to tie a tie. <laughs> and I said, no, I don't. And instead of shaming me, oh, he laughed at me for a minute or so. Instead of, uh, of you know, he, he grabbed me, put me in front of the mirror, stood behind me like he is my dad and taught me how to tie a tie. Yeah, and it's great. the only way I know how to tie one to this day. But um, that was my first impression. And also, I really got lucky. I got lucky that when I got there, Dell was hurt. Because he, he had, he played four years of college. I'd played two. These got, I was the youngest player in the league, I think 19 turning 20 or 20 turning 21. Yeah. And, and he, he could have been anyway with me. He, he was my best friend. He and Muggs became my best friends. They took care of me. 
um, I was so emotionally and socially <laughs> inept to be playing in the NBA. I could kind of keep up physically, but I was, I was very fortunate. He couldn't play right away. So I, and you weren't right for maybe a year. Um, you know, yeah. even when you came back that first year. Um, so, and, and then on top of it, they had Charlotte Hornets had drafted two, two guards who could shoot the shit out of it, but neither one of us could guard anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, uh, yeah, true. you know, we, I, but the reason I call him daddy is cause, uh, I, when I got there, Stefan couldn't talk. He was a baby. And uh, when we came back for the second year, Stefan had learned how to talk over the summer. And um, I remember coming up to pick Dell up first day to go work out. Stefan followed him outside and he's saying, daddy, daddy. And I looked at, at Della and went, daddy, like <laughs> somebody, one of my friends has a person calling them daddy now. Uh, I, I, I could, so I've called him daddy, my, my, our whole, you know, relationship. And that's just based off of uh, Stefan. Another one I remember right around that time was Stefan was starting to want to go everywhere with Dell, everywhere, you know, one year old, two years old, and um, <laughs> come over to pick him up for practice one day. And Stefan is just crying, he's chasing Dell out of the house. And I'm like, what's going on? And, and Stefan's yelling, where are you going, daddy? Where are you going? And uh, he said, I got to go to practice, Stefan. I got to go to practice. He said, oh, daddy, you go practice again. <laughs> like, is, is this going to be an all the time thing? <laughs> right, right. He said, yeah, I, I, yep, yeah. I got to go. What do you remember about those early days, man? I remember everything you said to the to the T. Uh, I remember you having me having to drive one of your four cars just to keep the battery charged. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you having to get zippers in your jeans because your cast was so large you couldn't get them over your jeans over the top. Uh, I remember you trying to date all, all the cousins in the Curry family. <laughs> we had some we had some really good times, man. And uh, oh, man. you know, we, we, right then you didn't think about you know what was what was it going to lead to? Were you going to remember this? Uh, but times like that, you know, you can you can reflect and you re remember all those things like it was yesterday. No question. I, I remember being in, in Charlotte just a couple of years ago. We were, you know. I was in for doing a game or something and you were there and, and Stefan was there and he came back and he just lit the place on fire that game against the Hornets. And we went off, we all went out afterwards, your sisters, I've been beating your sisters off of me for years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> every family get together. Yeah. I'm, I'm having to uh, yeah. fight off the Curry sisters. Um, <laughs> but man, it is, it's, it's just like family. And, and Josh, I, I don't know if you know this Dell, but you know, back when I was coming out of rehab the last time I lived with Josh out in LA for a couple of years and, and really got back on my feet uh, or he helped, helped me to get back on my feet and, and do so with as much dignity as possible. You've done that for me as well, man. And um, you know, I, I try to never ask for things and, and whatnot. And, but you've always been there. And um, you know, when I was at, at, at the bottom, or I, I felt like at the bottom, your family has, has just been a huge source of inspiration for me and my, and my road back from everything. And, and I can't thank you enough. I, I want to, I want to see what you remember about, because we were, we were young, we were so young. Um, I think about this a lot. The day, you, what do you remember about the day that we found out your dad had passed away? Oh, man. Uh, I remember we were in L.A. Um, I usually call, call home before every game, called home, and I knew something was wrong when my neighbor answered the phone. Um, her name was Sheila. And I was like, Sheila, you, you know, what, what are you doing? And she said, oh, your dad's sick. And he'd, uh, he'd had a heart attack couple years prior and I said what do you mean sick and she wouldn't tell me I'm like Sheila tell me and she said oh they've taken him to the hospital doesn't doesn't look good I call the hospital and they said he had passed away I mean I you were one of the first person that you were the first person I called I wrecked the hotel room 
I, I, I just, I just got mad. I got pissed. I wrecked the room. I didn't know what to do. I was a young guy myself. My dad was 58. Um, we were, I'm one of, of five uh, kids that he had. I was the only son, the youngest. Um, just like you said, you know, Steph wanted to follow me around. I went everywhere with my dad. He got me out of the house. Every time he went, I had to go with him just to get out of the house away from the girls. Um, so I called him for every game and, uh, knowing that that was no longer available. Um, you know, I didn't know how to respond. And it took me a long time to get over that as well. But I remember calling you and you coming down to the room. Uh, you weren't going to play that night. And I was mm-hmm. like, nah, you got to go play. Uh, but that's just the kind of relationship we had. Um, you know, life, you, you're going to struggle in life. Basketball's a game. You're gonna, everybody's going to struggle in life. They're going to go through things um, that you can't be prepared for, that things are going to come out of the woodwork, things that you you, you, you don't see coming, uh, but you got to deal with them. And it takes people to help you get through those, those life challenges. So um, I, I think that's something that everybody needs somebody in their corner when, when things aren't going right, when they're down, that they can, they're not going to judge. Um, they're going to say, hey, man, I'm here for you. You know, pick up the phone. What can I do? Um, and you were there for me that night, no doubt. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you remember it like I do. I, I do. I mean, you guys were inseparable. And, you know, my mom and dad had started coming down, um, you know, to see us play from time to time. So my mom and dad had become friends with your mom and dad. And so um, I, I do. I remember that day very vividly. We had, I think you had found out he wasn't feeling well the d- night before, maybe. Yeah, and we went yeah. to shoot around and came back. And, you know, like we all did, we were getting our room service or whatever, getting ready to take our naps. And I got a call from you and me and Muggs ran down there. And, you know, I, I almost tear up when I think about it every time because you were you were inconsolable. And, um, you know, you were also someone for me, you were a, a guiding light and I didn't really know how to take it. I just, I, I'll never forget you all those big ass hands of yours. Stefan's got them too. And when I see Stefan's hands, I think of the same thing uh, from time to time, even if he's shooting a free thrower. So I just remember those big ass hands of yours just in your head and you just didn't know what to do. And you flew out and went back home. And I think you missed only a game or so. And then we came back, but yeah, I'll never forget it, man. And, those bonds are something that, that are just unbreakable. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Go ahead. It really is. And we're, we're talking about, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and I just, over the all-star break, I was able to go visit my mom for the first time in a year. Um, last March 11th, when the league shut down, a couple of days later, I went, she still lives in the same house I grew up in. I went back to make sure she was okay to say, Hey mom, you know, you can't let people in. She's 85. Uh, and I, I stayed away from her um, until last last week. So uh, for her to still be alive and be well, watch the, be able to watch the boys play. Uh, if you want to call my mom, you better not call uh, when there's a Sixers or a Warriors game. <laughs> if she answers and it's not an emergency, she's going to say, hey, what, what, you know better than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You better try back later. <laughs> and she's she's as sharp as she can be. She she truly is. Yeah. Josh's been going. We've all been going. You know the pandemic. I didn't see my mom, mom and dad for weeks at a time. I'd take them food, leave it, wouldn't see him. Josh's dad. How long's your dad? Josh's dad is eighty. What is he, Josh? He is eighty seven. Eighty seven. Been in the hospital now or uh, facility that we're haven't been able to see him in at least a year. Right. Uh, yeah. Ten months. 10, 11 months, um, we've just been able to go to the window. It's been mm. brutal, you know? Um, yeah. I did get to see him once he had to go to the hospital and they were letting one person come in. So I came home just to do that. But it's, thank God, it's starting to open up. I'm going back in a few weeks and I'm going to be able to see my father and touch him. And I, I, I you know, I can't wait. I can't either. Um, uh, all right, let's talk some basketball. Um, uh, Dale, you know, we got really lu- we got really lucky. And I don't think I, I at some point I want to make a big push for it, but we got to play with somebody who was just a freak of nature. He really was as a as a guy, as a an athlete. Muggsy Bogues, one of the funniest, mm. um best basketball players I've ever played with. I mean, to me, he was like a 
a five foot three Jason kid. You know, he just lived to pass us the ball. Uh, and to do it like nobody's business and would get yeah. mad at you if you missed an open one. Yeah. Uh, uh, look, yeah. he got you. <laughs> you, know? yeah, no doubt. you, fuck, yeah. you fucked up yeah. my dime. You yeah. fucked up yeah. my yeah. dime. <laughs> what you dribbling for? I gave it to you so you didn't have to dribble. <laughs> uh, no doubt. No doubt. Run, he was so I'm, fast. So oh. fast, we'd be running behind him, and he's got his finger behind he's, us. Tell, tell us where to run. Yeah, yeah. Behind he's his back, like, right follow me, yeah. follow me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Urging go us. Screen, go, go screen him. <laughs> Just calling out the place. Yeah. Get open. Hope, get you know, open. It, well, I'm calling the Hornets games. My, my play by play guy, Eric Collins. Have you ever played with a guy that did this? Have you ever played with a guy that did this? I'm like, Eric. Every question you ask me is Muggsy Bones. He was the <laughs> toughest, fastest, meanest, er- everything you ask me, the little fellow Muggsy Bones had it. <laughs> yes, are you kidding? I'm like, no. Don't help him on a double when he when a bigger guy posts him up. He's going to get pissed at us for coming out. Yeah, yeah. We come, I got him. I'm coming out here to help. <laughs> and I'm pissed off. Enough, yeah, I'm, I'm, I still live here in Charlotte. He's right. He, he still lives here in Charlotte. I see him all the time. He's the same way. He calls me Gomez. Gomez. Well, come on, man. <laughs> on the golf really, course, the same way. He thinks he can hit it 300 yards. <laughs> yeah, man. One of the funniest dudes, intentionally and unintentionally uh, yeah. at times. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, truly one of the good, good people. I, I, think, I, I think Muggs belongs in the Hall of Fame. You know, he, he, what he did at that size, uh, he yeah. was a winner. Coaches loved him. Teammates loved him. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite story, mug stories is, well, we, you, me and you, we were, <laughs> it was Mug's bachelor party. And I, we won't get too far <laughs> down the rabbit hole, but. Uh, <laughs> Thank we, you. We, 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 yeah. <laughs> We were in Baltimore. Dell and I had flown into Baltimore for Mug's bachelor party. And uh, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think they were already married. But it was just sort of a formality or whatever. (laughs) And uh, so, but one of Mug's brothers uh, was was supposed to be showing up, who we knew, who I knew, but he wasn't there. And I didn't drink at the time. Uh, So knock at the door, all kinds of people in this suite at the, at the hotel, knock at the door. And Muggs is like, Rex, go, go get the door. So I go get the door. I open it up and it's his brother. One of his brothers, I won't say his name. And his brother's there just in all orange. Muggs had sent, sent a, a car to the jail to pick him up. He came right from the jail <laughs> straight to the park. <laughs> What's up? Orange, orange <laughs> jumpsuit. What is up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true story. The other, true the other story. thing about mugs that's so great was that M- 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 I've never I I learned a lot from dealing with people with M- from Mugsy because almost everybody that comes up to him, he's one of the most approachable guys that that yeah. you could ever that you could ever come across. Kids, women. Men, now, here's what you don't do, though, with mugs. Never come up to mugs, if you're an adult, and put your hand on top of his head. On his head. Don't do that. What will he say? What will he say? Uh, uh, Hey. (laughs) He'll say, hey, get your goddamn hand off me. I ain't no fucking kid. (laughs) Yeah, 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 I've heard that one several times over the years. Do not. That was a no no that yeah. was a no-no. Don't put now yeah. as it should be. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no doubt. That, that dude had the that, biggest heart, the oh, best right. teammate. Yeah, biggest heart, yeah. best teammate. You, you, you want to get in the fight? You better, you better take five foot three Muggsy Bones with you. And I agree with you about Hall of Fame. There's no, there will never be another five foot three guy playing the league. So who are you comparing him to? You compare him to himself. There's, there was never one, not one before him. There won't be one after him. What he did in the league and to play that long and to be that dominant, yeah, no doubt. Um, and, and he was yeah, different, you know, like different yeah, than Spud. His Spud was a scorer and not a point guard. You know, yeah. Michael Adams was a scorer. You know, Muggsy, Muggsy could defend. Muggsy could do. Muggsy could run your team. I mean, he yeah. knew everybody's yeah. position. Uh, 
It is an amazing. And coaches used to say, if you're on the floor and you don't see Muggsy, pick the damn ball up because he's good. He's probably going to take it. Yeah, if you don't see him, you better pick it up. Uh, he would, he would so. get somebody. He would he would pick somebody about once a game, and Dell and I oh. would be sitting over there because. <laughs> We, we wanted him to do it more, but, you know, also he had to be conscious and mindful of his fouls. We would watch him. He would just – because we he'd do it to us. In set him up. I'm going to set him up. Set him up. And he, yeah, he, yeah, would, set him up. he would slide with him as they were, as yeah, they were dribbling, yeah. and he would time their dribble. And mm-hmm. so when it left – at one point, when it leaves their hands, he would be on it before it hit the ground and gone the other way for a layup. Yeah, he would yeah, just time yeah. their dribbling. <laughs> gone. Yeah, uh, or, or he'd the, say he'd say he'd say Gomez, funnel him to the to the baseline, and then make it make him turn, make him turn. I got it every time it worked, man. Does he uh, be there like how a about, smothered chicken? How, how many times did we come out of the huddle after a Coach drew up a play? And he was like, Nah, that ain't, that ain't working. This is what we're going. Y'all come over here. This is what we're going to do. <laughs> this is what we're going to do right here. <laughs> oh man, I mean, one of the best teammates ever. Um, let, yeah. let me, my, while my dog's barking in the back, I want to change, uh, speeds for a second. Uh, I came to Charlotte. I had, I had, so now we've gone through our careers and I've, I've, uh, come to Charlotte and I'm scouting. And I think you're, you may, you may still be playing, uh, or just out. And I came to Charlotte and Stefan had a game and I think he was a sophomore. And yeah, I, was, uh, I was a couple years out. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And and we went over to watch. And I was asking you on the way over, how's Stefan doing? You know, and you were like, I'm not playing much. Uh, you let me know what you think. And so we went in there, and it was a, it could have been a freshman, but it was a JV game. And he got off the bench only in like the last two minutes of the game. Didn't even get in the game. And, you know, I watched him in warm ups and all that. And he was all feet and hands, you know, just big feet, yeah. big hands, but little, small. And uh, I remember coming out and you saying, well, and I said, he's going to be fine, man. You know, cause he loved to play. He was, he, he was eating up with working at it and all that stuff. But he, this was as it could have been freshman year, but maybe sophomore year in high school. So then fast forward a couple years and, you know, I knew, well, take me through that because I knew he wanted to go, you know, he wanted to go play at Duke. He wanted to go play at Virginia Tech. He wanted to go play Division I college basketball. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Didn't meet the eye test. Uh, played JV as a freshman, but when you came, he was a sophomore. Uh, didn't get to play much, but he didn't meet the eye test. He had a big head, big hands, big feet. Body body was nowhere matched to way his, his hands and his feet and his head. He was just lanky, loose. Um, but knew how to play, loved to play, didn't mind the work, could shoot it, always could shoot it, could handle it, knew the game, but just didn't meet the eye test. Wanted to go to Duke, wanted to go to Virginia Tech. Lots been talked about Virginia Tech. Uh, but I said, son, it doesn't matter you know, where you go. If you can play, they're going to find you. Bob McKillop sold him uh, on the Davidson program, uh, and the rest is history, man. I remember his uh, freshman year, uh, went to a tournament, I think it might have been his second game. He had like six turnovers in the first half. I'm like, ah, they're going to bench him. Came out, started the second half, had a great game. I'm in the airport flying back, and, and Davidson's in there, and McKillop comes up to me and goes, hey, your son's going to make a lot of money playing this game one day. So he knew it right away. I said, oh, overseas maybe? He goes, no, no, no. He's going to be all right. He's going to be all right. So, uh, yeah, but, he, you know, growing up around the game, you saw him in the locker room all the time, shooting – you know, paper in the trash bag, ne- you know, never coming out of the locker room. Sweaty, Practice. just sweaty, oh, sweaty yeah. back there. Just didn't watch the games because he's playing on yeah. the little hoop. Yeah. Yeah. Get, you know, get pissed when he couldn't come to practice, like oh, you yeah. said. Yeah. 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 That, was, when, that was one of our. When did you know uh, Steph and Seth were league? When were you like, oh, uh, he's going to play in the NBA? Was there a moment? Was there a game? Um, I was probably after Stefan's sophomore year in, um, in college. Uh, freshman year, I'm like, yeah, he's he's a pro player. Um, but after, you know, in, sometime in his sophomore year when they made that big run uh, to the Elite Eight, um, yes. you know, I said, okay, he's going to be a top top player, top pick in the draft. Now, 
Did you know he's going to be a two-time you know, MVP, unanimous, three-time champion? No, a lot of factors have to go into that. Uh, but I knew he, he had the skill set to play in the league, play well, uh, do whatever it took, took work, work ethic. And then Seth had the mentality that if Steph is going to do it, I know I can do it. What are you, what's, what are you talking about? I used to kill him in the backyard. That is Steph Curry's mentality right now. He'll, he'll tell you, I'm a better shooter than Stephen. He just gets more shots than I do. He has free reign. He touches the ball more. I'm a better shooter than him right now. That was his mentality the entire time. Y'all let Stephen do everything. Y'all let him do this, do this, do this. So, Seth has always had that mentality. Uh, and, and when Seth was a senior at Duke, he had a stretch fracture um, in his tibia. Didn't, didn't practice. He'd go up, run some dummy offense, and Coach K would let him go down and do his conditioning in a pool. Um, so he played his senior year without practicing hardly at all. Average about 18 a game. Knew after his senior year, had to get that, that leg fixed. Uh, so we put together a plan that, hey, it's probably going to take you a couple of years, do the G League uh, to get your shot. I remember going to Erie, Pennsylvania to watch Seth play uh, for the Erie Bayhawks in the G League. Tried to get there twice. Plane got turned around because of snow. Actually had to drive in. And I saw, uh, when I got to the games, two games that weekend, I saw Seth just totally dominate the game. And I told him afterwards, I'm like, Seth, you're going to make it to the league. One, because you got the skill set, the determination, uh, and the work ethic to do it. But if you can stay focused and play like that in Erie, Pennsylvania in the wintertime, <laughs> your, your mindset is right. You have the mentality to play in the NBA. Uh, he was ready when he got a shot. Um, and, you know, on a great team now in Philadelphia playing for his, his uh, father-in-law. Uh, last couple of starts, he's played starting the point guard with, with Ben Simmons out. So Seth is really liking where he's at. He's, he has a great family. His, his uh, you know, off the court uh, activities is set. Um, so he, he's, he's loving life right now. He's playing good ball. That just a, reminds me of one thing, too, because his percentage is actually three point percentage as a career is actually better oh, yeah. than Steph's. But oh, yeah. there's in the top 40 all time NBA. Uh, three point percentages. There's three curries. So I gotta wonder, nature versus nurture. What do you think there? I mean, you were obviously all got incredible hand eye, right? But you also had to work at it. You can't just, you know, what was it more the, the work ethic or just God given ability? I know well, it's both. It's, but. Yeah, it's, it's both actually. And this story's been talked about a lot. I had to change Stephen's shot. Um, between his sophomore and junior year, he shot it from his waist and moved it to above his head. Um, but you you, have, you you got that God-given ability, that, that athletic ability to shoot the ball. Then you have to nurture it. You have to work at, at it. You can't just say, all right, I can shoot. I'll be okay. No, you have to continue to work on it every year. Um, they're two of the best shooters in the world, but they work at it every single day, every single off season uh, to keep that skill set. If, if you don't work at something, you know this, Rex, you, you, you're going to lose the advantage. You're going to lose that skill. Um, so, again, I think those guys being around an NBA locker room at a young age, seeing how we worked, how we went about our business, not only myself as their dad, but then when they go to the locker room, they see Rex, they see Muzzy, they see Alonzo, they see Larry Johnson. They see all these guys putting in work, and I'm working out with them in the offseason. They go, damn, this is what it takes? All right, I got the skill set, but I got to continue to work and – uh, to this day, they still have that work ethic that's still set, and they still are not satisfied with what they've done so far. They want to get better, uh, and they want to be better players. See that 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 part of it is just fascinating because you know, I, and I think they I think they take their share of shit from some people for people believe in their blue bloods. Well, you're Grotto's Virginia. I know that, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, right. and I know where they came from. And to me. They did. Josh, we'll tell you where that is later. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. You you didn't uh, you know, you didn't come up with a lot. And so um, you know, they had advantages. That they still are that hungry and and that humble and and put in the work to me speaks volumes because you know, I have kids. We a lot of us who played in the NBA have have kids. A lot of those kids, um, you know maybe just aren't motivated. They like to play, don't love to play. Your boys have loved to play from the time they've been little. Uh, and it does jog my memory a little bit about they'd have both been in grade school. And I remember 
uh, I think I brought Zeke in, my son, and they played around while we played in a golf tournament one day. And I was asking you because Seth was born, I think, the year I got traded. So I was just around Stefan for three or four years and then not around Seth a whole yeah. lot. And uh, I remember asking you about Seth. Well, what's up with Seth? How's Seth? He said, he's mean, man. I wish Stefan was that mean. And like, I wish Stefan had had a little some of some of that or more of that right now. And they both ended up getting it. But I just remember Seth always just sort of being, you know, that chip on his shoulder. And, you know, it tells you he's he's taken the, the long way to get where he is. And I'm I'm just so proud of him. The other thing uh, that I think that I, I just find fascinating is when Steph to back up just a bit. When Steph was in high school, and I and I don't know if you remember this, it was going into his senior year, and you know he wanted to go. He he did. He wanted to go to ACC school. Wanted to go to Duke. And I yep. remember I knew Johnny Dawkins what a little better than you did at the time, because I was with David Falk. Johnny was with David Falk. So, and I remember you said, you know, Steph would like to go there. And I I called Johnny one day and I said, hey, listen, you know, Dell's son Stephen, he's this one, Johnny won't like that. I'm telling this or coach K, but <laughs> so what? And so, uh, I called and Johnny said, yeah, 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 I know. I know. Um, he said, let me get back with you. He got back with me the next day. And, and this was just to walk on. This was just to be a walk on. Yeah. And he said, yeah. yeah, we're full up, full up this year, maybe next year though. And so I gave that, I, <laughs> I gave that information to you. And then I didn't really think about it much more. Stefan signed, uh, with Davidson. And, uh, you know, I was in my own world at the time, a little painkiller issue, if you don't know. But I looked up one day and the top two scorers in the country for freshmen were, were was a guy named Kevin Durant. And the guy right below him was Stephen Curry. They were both averaging almost 30 points a game their freshman year. Well, Stephen blows up. Of course he does. Now, at the end of that year, everybody in the country mm -hmm. wanted Stefan. They thought, yeah. you know, he, he's at Davidson. No way he stays at Davidson. And when I say that, everyone, Kentucky, Tennessee, everyone wanted Stefan to come. Duke, everyone. And I called up Dell and I said, Dell, you know, I got, I got people calling me, you know, <laughs> uh, can you put me in touch with Dell? Um, and so I called you and I said, Hey, you know, two or three schools here, they're really, you know, interested in having Stefan. And you said, let me get back with you. And so day went by and th now this was Stefan. He was, you know, he, he's only been out of the house for a year. He's still yeah. very, got a lot of manners, not, 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 not a real cusser or anything at this point. And, and you called me and said, I said, well, what's up? He said, he told me dad, if, if they didn't want me, then I don't want them now. Fuck them. And said, I'm staying at Davidson. And I just I got goosebumps. <laughs> I almost started to cry. I was like, that's exactly the answer I yeah. hoped I would get. Yeah. Do you remember any of that? Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Always been a loyal guy. Uh, and I remember the biggest thing when Bob McKillop recruited him and Stefan knew he wasn't meeting the eye test with the ACC schools. Bob McKillop said, I'll take you just like you are. Right now, that 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 struck a chord. Plus, uh, Stefan picked Davidson not only for Bob McKillop and the great uh, institution academically, but they were playing a really big, tough D1 schedule. They were playing the Carolinas, the NC States. Uh, they were not afraid to play the big boys to get them ready for conference play. Uh, so he, he thought, hey, I'm playing against the guys, the schools that didn't recruit me, didn't want me. I'm going to, you know, play with a chip on my shoulder. So uh, he was absolutely fine. I, I I called him. I knew he was not going to leave. I just wanted to, get, you know, test the waters and see where he's at. But now Seth, on the other hand, started that Liberty. Yeah. Let all freshmen in scoring. Uh, and this is, you know, two different sons, totally different, two different situations. I thought Seth needed to play at a higher level. Um, so I remember after his freshman year, we may be in the backyard, something, washing his car or something. I'm like, Seth. at a higher level he goes yeah i do too i go all right well uh, coach richie mckay who's back at liberty right now this is gonna be a tough call to tell richie that uh you know we need to transfer richie's a great guy uh, but he, he understood it and i said seth you're gonna get um 
all the schools that you really wanted to recruit you and even your brother, they're going to call you. I said, schools like Duke. And he looked at me like, I'm like, <laughs> serious, man. So, you know, he, we, we put the fillers out. He was, he was going to transfer. And I, I mean, schools would call me left and right. But I waited for Coach K. He was, Coach K was like the 10th school to call me because he said, Dale, I know everybody's called you. Um, but I just got my, my release from Liberty. And I know you're, you're above the board. You're already probably down the road. I said, no, nah, Coach, you actually waited. You're going to be our first visit. And it was the only visit we took. Um, so, yeah, Seth loved his time there. Um, and in that in senior year, we talked about petitioning the NCAA for a, a, a sixth year for Seth. He was like, no, no, no. I've had enough college. Uh, I'm out. <laughs> this Duke shit is hard, man. I'm getting my degree. <laughs> I am not going to grad school at Duke, man. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, that's great. As I'm sitting here uh, in my 88 Hornets bathrobe, in case people don't know. Damn, I my, wish I knew my, where mine was. Monogrammed Rex <laughs> on it. 1988, mm. fellas. And then, oh, daddy, I got to send you this. This is uh, all the guards of the 90s on here. Me, you, mugs, MJ. Yeah. How about being on a shirt with MJ? That ain't bad. How about that? How about that? Uh, I work hey. for his team right now. He was yeah, actually in the know. game first time the other night. So Was he? Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I was going to ask um, about uh, – well, I, I got a special spot for the Hornets, of course. But watching LaMelo Ball play, and I, I was iffy. I, I was out in L.A., uh, for a few years when he was in high school and when Lonzo was in high school and, and the middle brother. And uh, I was a little mixed. I thought Lonzo was terrific, but LaMelo was really little, really little, um, like as a freshman. And, um, and then I kind of lost track. And then saw, little. I, yeah, little like that. And so I said, yeah, yeah. next thing I knew he was playing overseas and somebody said, well, you know, he's six, seven now. And I went, what? <laughs> and the more you watch him, the more you can't help but love him. I mean, from my standpoint, yeah. what are you what are you seeing? Well, one, he plays bigger than he is. He's six seven. Uh, he'll mix it up. He'll stick his nose in there. He's not afraid at all. He plays with like a veteran already. I think playing, uh, you know, in Australia helped him play, uh, prepare him for the league. He is so coachable, so humble. Uh, he is nothing like. You know, his reputation may have perceived him. Uh, he's a great teammate. His teammates actually love – who wouldn't love playing with him? Always got a yeah. smile on his face. He's always thinking about the next play. He's not afraid to say, yeah, I made a mistake. I, I, you know, that was on me. How many rookies do, could you do you find around the leagues and, uh, you know, that wasn't me? He, he, uh, he's, a different, he's a different breed. Um, he makes the flair play, but he can also make – just to or the regular, you know, two hand chest pass, bounce pass. Uh, he shoots it better than anybody ever thought he could, except for his pops. Um, he's just he, he's only going to get better when he gets stronger. Uh, he finishes around the rim with either hand. He he sees the play before it develops. He's a, you know he, he's a step ahead of everybody else. Um, yeah, he, he's he's a special player. He, he's going to be really good, really good you for know, a long time. He is I, a fun guy to watch and talk about everything. No question. And and I, for those that don't know, you know, I we're friends. I would say this uh, even if it weren't true, probably because we're friends. But Dell's top five color man in the NBA. Um, uh, you and Eric are entertaining as shit uh, every single night. But the thing that I'm finding, and I, I see it, it's like us playing with Muggsy. Muggs made us so much better. Uh, Jason, yeah. you know, running with a guy like Jason Kidd, all I had to do was run. LaMelo is taking, he, he's made, helped make Miles jump this year, Bridges. Miles has made a jump because he can fit. He's got somebody just looking for him to finish all the time. He gets a lob, gets yeah. his confidence going. Um, you know, he's making the game. He, Malik. Malik's a two guard. He's just, you know, he is what he is, but man, Malik's had some really good games for you guys this year. And I think a lot of that's a product of, they know who's at the point. They know who's at the point. They know if they're open, if he's got the ball, they're going to, the ball's coming to him and it's coming to him at the right time. Uh, I'm glad you brought Malik. Malik was not in the rotation at all early uh, this year. He uh, 
had some health problems, off the court problems. Um, and I don't think James Brago really trusted him early in the year, but he was ready when he did get his number called, and he's played great. He's, he's slowed down so much uh, with his game now. Um, he's playing a lot. Uh, he's playing unselfish. He's, he's really putting in effort on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, I think uh, Lamella has really helped Rozier. Um, Rozier's, you know, uh, catch and shoot guy, but can put it on the floor as well. Uh, they play great together. Uh, last couple of games, Devontae Graham coming back from his injuries, moved to the bench. He's helped the second unit. So uh, all that is a product, I think, of LaMelo Ball coming in and being able to play right away and being able to do things that he's done. It's allowed James Borrego and his staff to totally regroup uh, this team, put out different rotations. P.J. Washington's playing great right now, uh, playing inspired basketball. So Go Kentucky. Hornets are fun to watch. Yeah, Hornets are fun to watch, man. Um, they're the top of the league. Right now, and uh, these guys are focused, determined. They're not looking at the standings. They, they'll tell you they're, they're not. They are. Everybody's looking at the standings right now. Uh, but I would say their goal is to be above that play-in spot, be above, above seven and eight, so they don't have to have that play-in game. Uh, and, and you know they've got a tough schedule coming up here. They got to go back out west with so many games coming so fast. We just talked about it every other day, if not every day. Uh, and I'm, you know, I got to commend the league for this. Load management was a big talk, big thing the last couple of years. Guys have really stepped up and, and kind of gotten away from that, especially now with playing the games back to back every other day, not two and three, four days off. Uh, guys have said, all right, we, we, we took advantage of that. There's no need for us to sit out unless we really need to. So I got to commend, tip my hat to the league, the players, and all the teams for just doing away with that, man. We would have been laughed at the freaking no doubt. locker room. No doubt, what? you're not you're not going to play because why? They, they wouldn't yeah. let you. You couldn't do that. They'd trade you. They would just trade Speaking you. Speaking yeah. of yeah. that, you guys seemingly both your games would have really translated well. Now, do you think about that? Oh. What would that be like for you? In my mind's oh. eye, in my mind's eye, Dell is like C.J. McCollum, like just a score shooter. Could, could, we, we couldn't dribble it like these guys can dribble yeah. it now. I mean, we could handle it a little bit, but to be able to, in my mind's eye, I would like, I would love to be Zach Levine, you know, just. I would love to be Joe. I would love to be Joe Harris. Joe Harris. There Joe you go. Harris, man. Making well, 75 a, million. You know, all I do is catch 75 mil playing with whoever, getting open looks every time you wanted one, man. Hey, Joe man. Harris, that's me, hey, bro. Hey, man, that's you. <laughs> hey, yeah. well, I was going to ask you about that. But my son, Zeke, Zeke's up in Jersey. He's in the video yeah. room up there with Stevie. Stevie and he have been friends since Zeke was like three. So I'm really happy about that. What's your take on the Brooklyn Nets this year? You know what? I, I, I didn't. I, I, when they first, you know, Steve got the job, I went, oh, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> but he's done a great he's done a great job he's done a great job piecing those guys together um they're, they're sharing the ball i think it's a big thing when Kyrie told uh harden you're the point guard i think they they're at a point in their career all three of those guys kd harden and um uh, Kyrie. they want to win and they know they can't do it by themselves they've got to sacrifice uh and they're mature enough to know how to do it um, so yeah, they're, they're the, I think they're the team of the East right now, especially if they defend just a little bit, you know, yeah. you're not going to, two of those guys are, are going to be on every single night. Uh, so they're going to have enough scores with Joe Harris and, and guys like Spencer Dinwiddie. He's not even, he's not even available. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, they, they got, they got a they squad. Can, yeah. They gonna score the ball. If they defend and commit to that a little, a little bit, they're, they're going to be tough. Uh, I would love to see a, a Philly Brooklyn uh, That's East, what I was going to ask finals. you. Yeah, that would be great, yeah. right? That yeah. that would That's be nice. Basketball, no doubt. I, I uh, you know, watching those guys up there, it, it's just uh, James. James is something. James really, I do when I watch James. It, you know, I've watched him since he was at ASU back in Phoenix as a college guy, and the one you can say a lot of things about him. That dude loves to play basketball. And, you know, he's the kind of guy, yeah. if you show up in the morning and he's there with his dudes, uh, you know, no teammates, he might just be playing, you know, one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two with his boys. He just likes to play. Yeah. 
loves to play. Yeah. And that goes a long way in the NBA. KD's kind of that way, too. He just likes to play basketball. Um, so Kyrie can be, you know, kind of how he is. And I, I think they've got a chance. I think also, you know, just from the outside looking in, I think Steve having Mike there and Mike having coached James yeah. for the last few years, I think that's yeah. got to be a big comfort to Stevie. Yeah. We haven't really yeah. talked about it a whole lot, but I know he was happy when, when Mike decided to come there. Yeah, absolutely. Have a guy, you know, Mike didn't tell me one for him to be able to say, all right, I'll come and assist you. He's been, yeah. he's not an assisted coach. Yeah. For him, <laughs> him, yeah. For him to check it, check his ego and say, yeah, I'll come help you. And it says a lot about the, the relationship between Mike and James for James to be able to say, this is where I want to go. Uh, I want to play, you know, in Brooklyn with those guys, knowing that Mike is uh, on the coaching staff. So yeah. Uh, Mark's John Marks, he's done a good job. And then they got Blake Griffin, you know, uh, what Blake's got left, I think he's got some stuff left. Uh, once they, you know, piece him in, they, it's going to be tough. Even with Blake, you know, Blake right now, I don't – watching him in Detroit, it didn't look like he was moving real well. However, if he can rehab just a little, they don't need much. And the thing right. – the reason I like it is because instead of throwing a rookie in there uh, in the playoffs, you throw Blake Griffin in there, he's not going to get rookie calls. He's still going to get vet calls. And no matter what – Blake can still pass that basketball and he, yeah. he can run offense through him. So uh, I, I like it too. If they can get him back healthy uh, or at least somewhat healthy, that's a, that's a plus, I think. And he's not going to take the minutes of Kyrie Harden or Durant. You know, right, he, he's, right. he's, he's, you know, he's not taking those minutes. And I think I heard him say, I can be a facilitator. I can still dunk the basketball. So he, he knows he's not the Blake Griffin of old, uh, but he can contribute now. Can he get a customer coming off the bench? He's never come off the bench his entire career. That's an adjustment. You yeah. know that. So, yeah. um, will his body adjust to it? I think his mind will adjust to it, but will his body uh, adjust to him, you know, coming off the bench in a, in a different warm-up, getting getting ready scenario? That's tough. Yeah. Did you hear Dell just shit on me, uh, Josh? Did you? I did. did I did you, notice he, that. It yeah. kind of really happened. When, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. yeah huh? Uh-huh. He said, uh, yeah, well, coming <laughs> off the bench, you got to get used to coming off the bench. That's a whole mindset. Well, you know that. Uh, <laughs> and I damn sure couldn't. I had no idea. I'd sit over there. I wouldn't be – I'd be cold. Dell, Dell had a whole thing. If you watch any game. I remember him starting a couple games and coming to me and going, I don't like starting. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? <laughs> and then he had a whole thing. He'd sit over there, towel on his hand, towel on his hand, <laughs> keeping, his, keeping his hands moist, ready to come in with that shooter's touch. Uh, but I was astonished that uh, guys could come off the bench. Um, Daddy, thank you. Thanks for doing this. Josh, you got anything else? You got anything else? I, uh, for both of you. And it, it can't be named Curry or Chapman. One guy you played with or in the league now or whatever to make a three-pointer to save the universe. He's got one shot. It's a tough <laughs> one. For, for, for one of us, it's a tough one. Uh, uh, well, for both of us. I, I guess I would, I would say this. I've seen Stefan do it at the in when it matters the most in a championship game. Uh, and I'm a horse player. Um, I've not seen Seth do it in that, in that moment. So I wouldn't bet on the first time starter. I would take Stephen Curry to, to save my life with a three. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Uh, just, just to keep my boys <laughs> still liking their pops. Uh, I'm not going to pick either one of them. I'm going Ray Allen. I play with Ray Allen in, in Milwaukee. You know, still leads uh, every uh, the league in three point makes. Steph's going to catch him for sure. But just to keep my boys out of it, I'm going Ray Allen. Yeah, yeah, nice. I, I got to tell you guys that this this story. Oh, yeah, you can't lose with Ray, Reggie Miller, Dale Ellis, on Rick. Yeah, on and on and on. Um, yeah, I uh, I forgot what I was going to say. I was getting ready to say something pretty interesting, but I've, I've complete <laughs> I've completely lost it. Um, yeah. Oh, Dell, Dell, who'd you grow up? Who'd you grow up trying to play like? I, I've never known that. Like when you were a teenager, who was your guy? Did you have a guy? Yeah, I didn't have a guy. Uh, Doctor J. Back in the day, man, you, we could get one NBA game on on Sundays. Doctor J was the guy that we saw. I saw all the time. He 
he and uh, David Thompson, the only guys I had a poster up in my room. So that was my guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, remember those? That, you remember Thompson. when we? You remember when we? Uh, we got to Charlotte, and one of the big thrills of my life was Dave, I had David plastered all over my rooms of my wall. Yeah, you know, six yeah. three, six four, jumping jack. He and Griff, Daryl Griffith, who you played yeah. with. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were my idols. Um, but in Charlotte, they had hired the Hornets had hired David Thompson to be in the community relations department, Josh. And one of the big thrills we got was David, he'd blown his knee out uh the previous year and just couldn't play anymore. But about once every two weeks, he they would David would come out and play with me and Dell and Muggs. And he would kick our asses. He would kick my ass, I know. And, yeah, and yeah kick my ass and then his knee would balloon up and he couldn't play for a couple more weeks. But man, it was just a thrill to, to be on the same court with, with that guy, yeah. David Thompson. Yeah. Other thing I wanted to ask you about, you were a hell of a baseball player, right? Yeah. 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 I played, I played baseball in college drafted, yeah. drafted by the Orioles out of college in high school as well. All the schools that I visited out of high school uh, for basketball, I was under the assumption that I was going to play baseball too. So I went to Virginia Tech. First year, I didn't play. I got mononucleosis last week of the ba uh, basketball oh, season. The kissing disease. Yeah. The kissing disease. Ha, ha, ha. I was big man on campus at Virginia Tech. <laughs> I was a big man on campus, baby. Uh, <laughs> sophomore year, I got cut twice by the 1984 Olympic team. So I, mm -hmm. I didn't get back at school in time to play baseball. Played my junior year, 6-1, and one, drafted by the Orioles. They wanted me to leave school and go to this rookie camp. My dad said, boy, what the hell's wrong with you? You ain't going nowhere. You stay in college and playing basketball. So, uh, yeah, but I, 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 I was better at baseball. My, 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 a lot of my dad's uh, buddies will tell you I was better at baseball pitcher uh, than I was at basketball early. I loved it. Uh, Golf's my uh, thing now, man. Oh, yeah, I know. I can't wait to get back out on out, out on the course with you. Josh isn't a golfer, but uh, uh, he'll he, he, you can come come along anyway, Josh, please. I'll, I'll, Entertainment. I'll, I'll drive. Bring, your, bring your banjo. Sure. sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, the one thing I'll finish up on, I, uh, I want to say it was either my first or second NBA preseason game. And we took a bus, I think, from Charlotte to two things happened on this trip. Charlotte to uh, uh -oh. Spartansburg. Yeah. Spartanburg, South Carolina, Spartanburg, something like yeah, yeah. Spartanburg. Yeah. And uh, you weren't playing. Muggsy was not going to play. So it was me and like Michael Holton, Kurt Rambis, uh, Dave Hopp and Tim Kempton, uh, you know, and, but the added bonus was we were going to play the Chicago Bulls. And, uh, you know, I'm a young rookie. I had, you know, of course, been watching Michael play for a few years. And but still, I also at this point, I thought Larry Bird sucked. I had never played against him. I thought he was about six, five. Uh, and so, <laughs> so I, I was perfectly wired to be an idiot. And I remember we're getting <laughs> off the bus. I didn't want to give it up that anybody was better than me. Or, you know, even the thought of that was kind of offensive. And I got off and, and they were like, Somebody said, uh, uh, yeah, Rex got Michael tonight. And and I was like, he's got me, something stupid like that. And I looked at you and Muggs, and you you guys were just like, okay. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I said, what? And he went, okay. And, and I'll never forget, Dale said, he's about to go out there and get some of Black Jesus tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He about to get baptized real quick. And I damn sure yeah, did. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this thing? <laughs> it didn't look I mean, like this on TV. No, not at all. I mean, he, we were going for loose balls. I'm going with two hands. The ball's going to the corner. And he's going with one hand and sucking it back while the ball's going that way. His hands were so fucking big. Jesus Christ. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. I love a story a Rex told me before, just because you and Muggsy and he all living in the same place, we were watching the game, Golden State, and he just looked kind of forlorn. And he's like, I remember there, uh, Dell and Muggsy and I, we thought we were hot shit because we were NBA players and we were tough. And yeah. 
we get in the car to go someplace, and little did we know, the best player was strapped into a car seat in the back. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, right. Right? <laughs> Say, give me a – where's my sippy cup? We'll exactly right. right. <laughs> exactly right. Oh, right. man. Well, I don't, right. it was, I don't know if it was that, that trip or one later. That was a close preseason game, and, you know, your mom and dad or somebody brought Steph into the game, and – uh, we didn't, for whatever reason, we didn't have to take the bus back that night. So, you know, we lived next door to each other. So I was going to ride with you and Stefan and whoever else was in the car with us. And Stefan was having just one of those nights. He was not feeling the car seat. This is not feeling the car seat. And, uh, yeah, you know, just tensing up, you know, trying to get out of the car seat. So yeah. finally you were like, Rex, just take him out of there. I took him out, laid him on my chest. He fell right asleep. And I, I, I don't, I don't think I moved. I was afraid to move, you know, the whole <laughs> trip back to Charlotte. But I knew in that moment, I knew that just feeling his heartbeat on my chest, I knew that I was going to be a dad someday. And uh, I, um, it, it's just it's something I'll, I'll never forget. And whenever I see him, whenever I see you guys, I think about those things. So yeah, I love man. you, daddy. Yeah. I love you, man. Love Thank you too, you. man. Thanks for coming on. Um, come back, do it again. I will. Absolutely. Josh, good to see you, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming. Pleasure. All right. Bring your robe next time, Daddy. I got to find it, man. I'm, I'm going to have one made. <laughs> yeah. call, up Bob, get, call up Bobby Joe. I bet he's still got it. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, he does. See, we, got a, we, got a whole nother, we got a whole other show to talk oh, about those God. first few years. We, yeah. we sucked. We were the worst team in the league, literally. Um, but, man, yeah. we had some fun. <laughs> this Most year we this year we knocked on the door. Next year we're gonna kick the damn thing in. <laughs> that's what that's what Robert Reed told our fans after we won 19 games. They had a, had a parade, parade for us. <laughs> we had a parade. 19 wins. We had a parade. Had a man. parade. A bar. That is a uh, low bar. I remember though the fans would come see it. They come in droves, in droves, oh, and you know yeah. everybody else is putting up championship banners and and stuff like that. And every year we're doing a an attendance banner, attendance and banner. we loved it. We loved it, but also <laughs> we're getting ready to play a team that's laughing at us right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> I remember also Dell telling me one night uh, we got we got beat, just got hammered. Uh, early on and I was you know I'm coming from college where we've never lost more than one game in a row ever and uh and we're losing every other night and the losing is starting to get me and I remember Dale just came in he put put his hand on the back of my head one night and said hey listen we're not very good we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna lose three out of four nights we're just gonna do that that's what's gonna happen and we just got to keep getting better every game because that is what it would happen. We'd play with yeah. a team till the middle of the fourth quarter, and then they'd start playing hard. So we wouldn't we wouldn't get any calls. Didn't know how to win, and that's how most games went. The games we won, we just sneaked the team that wasn't really you know <laughs> prepared for us that night. Wasn't that night? But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all right, man. Thanks. Love you, Daddy. Hey guys. Talk Love to you, you soon. guys. Thanks. Come back. All right, brother. Come back and do it again, please. I will. All right, All right man. Thanks. Good stuff. Wow, Rex, that that was a lot of fun, man. That was fun for me just to watch you guys walk down memory lane, those stories, and to see the real true affection you guys have for each other. That was a lot of fun, man. Great first episode. Oh, that's my guy. I love him to death. I, I enjoy introducing my good friends to my other good friends. I'm glad you guys are good friends now. Dell's the best. I can't wait to get Stefan in a few weeks. Uh, we're going to have all kinds of people coming up. Mary Trump, Jane Lynch, Tommy Chong. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. So wherever you're listening to the podcast right now, uh, if you enjoyed it, just hit that subscribe button. That would really help us out. And uh, come back and see us every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern for more fun.